So Lowe's and Home Depot, they have these little do-it-yourself workshops for children, and my daughter loves doing those. A little while back, we saw a kid whose dad had built a little lumber cart for his son, and he was wheeling around the store. So today I wanna to build the same thing for my daughter, except for I'd like things to be a little bit more authentic, so I'm gonna build mine out of metal. I've got a sheet of metal here that I'm gonna use for the cart base, and I'm going to use conduit for the rails. Got the pipe bender all set up, got my clamps holding the pipe bender down, and if this thing falls down, I guess you can watch part of this video on Fail Army. I don't have a whole lot of experience bending pipe, and so I don't know a whole lot about measuring back, making the angles, things like that. So I want this cart to be about 24 inches long. And so what I've done is made a mark at 30 inches and 60 inches. And then I've just made a, put a piece of tape on here with a mark. And so I'll just line these marks up and so I can bend the pipe. And then whatever this ends up being, even if it's like 26 inches, something like that, I can build the base to fit these versus these to build the base because I think I'm better at building squares better than curves. Because the conduit's hollow, I kind of expected this. So I did buy a bag of sand that I'll fill this conduit with and hopefully that'll help. So I packed the sand in the conduit and still had the same result. But what I tried instead was using a piece of rebar. And so I put the rebar inside the conduit and just got it centered between the two wheels and it bent a pretty good 90. So you might be wondering why I'm putting this much effort into trying to make this 90 here. I have a conduit bender, but the problem is it's more of like a sweeping 90. And I want this to be more like the carts actually have a nice um, like tighter 90 to it. So this is about as artsy as I get and I know a lot of people put a lot of time and effort into their art so this is just something I want to do to where it looks really good. So a little recap of what I did. I put my 12 inch piece of rebar inside the conduit. I have another piece of conduit that's measured out 24 inches so I can push the piece of rebar right in the conduit right where I need it and it's right in between these two wheels here whatever you want to call them. And then I just lined up my mark, and so I'm gonna bend that solid rebar inside that conduit. And that's what I want it to look like. The tight bends up at the top. It'll have the four rails and then be two of the rails will be welded together on either side. So that's exactly what I was looking for. So now I'm gonna build the platform. I'm gonna build it 18 inches wide. And it'll be 30 and three quarters long. I'm just gonna be using 16 gauge steel. I know it bends pretty easily. I'm gonna do something to make it a little bit more rigid. And I am gonna have some bends and things so you'll see what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna cut it larger than, than the dimensions, and then go along and bend it one inch in and kind of make like a little box, flip it over, and then that's what the rails are getting welded to. This is a little bit difficult to bend, but I've seen guys make some really deep grooves in here and almost take away all the strength. So I just kind of scored the line and just try to put a lot of effort into bending these to make sure I have plenty of metal on the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and get these corners welded up and then I'm gonna go look for some angle iron to where I can 
put in the middle here to keep this from, it's still kind of flimsy, so hopefully that'll give it a little bit of strength having the angle iron right there in the middle. If you've seen some of my other metalworking videos on the channel, you'll see this Burnington machine. I use this to get all the mill scale off from the metal so it'll be ready to paint. I'm hoping one piece of angle iron is going to make this rigid enough. I think it will. These pieces of conduit are galvanized, which means they have zinc on the outside for the galvanizing. Zinc is really dangerous when you get airborne, so whenever you're grinding it or whenever you're going to be welding it, make sure that you protect yourself so you wear some sort of respirator. But also, um, when I go to cut this, I'm going to grind everything off so it'll, all, so it'll also weld better because zinc doesn't weld very well. It's hard to weld through zinc. Besides so the fact that it smells like a campfire in here, because I'm kind of lighting this pine wood on fire, I think this thing's coming together pretty well. To make the cross pieces, I just took a piece of conduit and just ground out the inside, just to kind of make it fit in the middle there. I'm okay if it's a little bit sloppy, so I can fill all that in with metal. So all I did on the last one is just get my measurement Add about an eighth of an inch to each side, and then just ground out the uh, round portion with the grinder. So I'm going to go ahead and get all these in place, and then I'm going to go ahead and manipulate the whole thing to well, some of the places that uh, I need to get to. It'll just be easier just to move it. I'm gonna get the wheels welded on. Same thing, this is all galvanized. So I'm gonna grind down wherever I need to weld. I'm going to go finish welding around the, the little pipes that are horizontal and then clean it up a little bit and then get it painted. While I'm waiting for the paint to dry, I do want to do a review of this 12 ton hydraulic pipe bender from Vibor. First of all, I've never had a problem with any of Vibor's tools. Every time I order them, they just show up. Uh, damages, the boxes aren't damaged, everything's in good condition. I really like this because I just dumped it out of the box, put on the die that I needed, made a couple adjustments and that was it. I'm sure a lot of other pipe benders are similar to this one, but what I like is I just order this thing on Amazon and it shows up pretty quick. The pipe bender does come with six dies, and these sizes are definitely all I'm ever gonna need. With the dies and everything, it weighs about 70 pounds, and of course this is a bench top model, so I'm just going to be putting it up on probably my welding bench here. I'm not leaving it mounted, but it's not too heavy just to pick up and move around. 
there aren't any holes in the base to mount it down to a table or something like that so you might have to do that which I don't think is a huge huge deal like I said I'm sure a lot of these pipe benders are the same the one thing that I did notice is that this will spread apart pretty far and so when I was trying to keep my pipe at 90 degrees I could tell it would shift a little bit when it was under pressure from the jack and so I'm probably just gonna go put some washers on the end on the outsides and just kind of keep this tight maybe it'll help maybe it won't I don't know on Vivor's website they said that in order to get 90 degrees you had to kind of do it incrementally so you would jack it up a little ways and you might have to adjust a little bit and then jack it up again I noticed on the half inch pipe I didn't have to do that I pretty much just went until the pipe started to touch the springs and that made my 90 degree angle so even though this is a 12 ton jack I do want to give it a little bit of a test. So I have this inch and a half gas pipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if, see how well it bends this. So obviously the pipe bender is capable of bending the pipe. It just looks like, I was hoping, just because it's a little bit thicker wall, that it wouldn't do this, but uh, it certainly isn't the fault of the pipe bender. I'm just gonna have to do the old sand trick. And I know on their website they said that it wouldn't bend 90 degree angles, that you would have to bend it a little bit, position, reposition it, bend it a little bit. Um, but I'm thinking that this would have pretty much made the bend, I had a little bit more room in here, so I probably could have made this bend if I would have filled it full of sand. So it's definitely a great pipe bender. I look forward to using it in the future with some other projects. I'm going to be painting this cart blue. It's actually in no way to endorse Lowe's. Uh, we go to the Lowe's and the Home Depot workshops. Uh, we just go to Lowe's a little bit more often. And I kind of like the color blue better than the color orange. So they were just shopping for some materials for our next video. And it's going to be something that's going to help her in her workshops coming up. I'd like to thank Vivor for the opportunity to review the pipe bender. Every time that I get new tools, I always seem to find new uses for them. So I'm definitely going to be using this in the future. Please like and share this video. Thanks for watching.